I want to appreciate God for the privilege to be here tonight. This is a correct. This is a correct. Wow. Wow. The atmosphere of worship in this place is I want to appreciate you, sir. Appreciate all the men of God that are seated here. Just want to stand on the existing protocol. Huh. Evangelist Wisdom Chidioke. I want to say thank you. Thank you for being a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate great man of God from Ibadan. I want to appreciate you. I appreciate you. Uh, Sister Victoria, I want to appreciate you. Please uh, appreciate everyone. I am going to be spending just a little time with you. And I believe that somebody will not go back home the same way he has come. In the name of Jesus. A date with destiny. I'm going to be speaking briefly on what I call a date with destiny. A date with destiny. Destiny is said to be the hidden power in man believed to control the future events. That's what we call destiny. Destiny is said to be the hidden power. The hidden power. No wonder Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Not unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. So, destiny is said to be the hidden power in man believed to control the future events. Let me warn you. I am just the John the Baptist and another word is coming. I'm going to be just so, so fast. I want to tell you a story, the story of a woman in the Bible. This woman got married with very beautiful dream. She wanted to bear children, affect her neighbors, and affect her neighborhood, and maybe affect the whole city because she got something. The man that married her abused her, and later on, abandoned her. It was like Oguile. There was like a war raging over her life. When the man left her, she thought that she was not going to be eligible for marriage again. Another man came proposing to her. She agreed not minding what she went through in the hand of the first man. And this man did exactly the same way or the same thing that the first man did. Left this woman in her sorrow, dejected, frustrated. And that continues. And another man came into her life. The pain of man abandoning you and moving away without a child. Not, not one of them gave her a child. She did not give a child to any of them. Was there. As a matter of fact, she was almost losing hope. And then another man came. They began to come. There were like five of them that came. And the sixth one she was staying with eventually agreed to stay. No child. This woman had no child to send on an errand, so she has to go by herself. So she went one day to go and fetch water. She went outside of the city and she went to a particular well. That well had history behind it. And when she got to that well, she met one man. Don't forget she had met many, many men. About five of them. She was staying with the 61. And then 
she met this man who was asking her for water to drink. The woman was looking at this man. So all men are the same. So if you want to, you want to, you just want to propose, or you want to date, or you want to ask me out, you want to, is this the way to, you want to play your games again? Jesus was the man that he met, and Jesus was looking at her, and at a point, she took Jesus to be a very serious person. So Jesus said, "If you had known the gift of God, I would." You will have asked me to give you a water that is better than the one you have come to fetch, the living water. And the woman said, you don't even have a bucket to fetch this water. And then, are you better than our father Jacob who dug this well? And conversation started. And that was how Jesus Christ said, where is your husband? He said, I don't have. Because she, she wouldn't know what will happen what will happen next to the sixth one. He said, I don't have. And Jesus said, you have said the truth. You don't have it. You don't have, even the man that you have at home will soon leave you. So you don't have anyone. And so, you can imagine for so, a woman to stay with five men. I don't know how many years. Five men. Some maybe five years, maybe three years, maybe two years. And this woman was dying on the inside. I don't want to just see the, the Bible is saying here, John chapter 4, from 1 to 26. I don't want you to read it because of time. And the woman said something, said, I perceive, sir, that thou art a, a prophet. I perceive that you are a prophet. Because Jesus Christ, by word of knowledge, told her her own story. There is a prophet in the house. He said, I perceive that you are a prophet. You need a prophet in your life. I can teach. I can preach. But the ministry of a prophet is completely different. Now, hear this. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Do you worship? Ye know not what? Ye, we know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. For the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is his spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto, unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee, I am he. Some encounters are orchestrated by destiny. When your time of visitation comes, everything will change. You may be going through some experiences and you wonder whether God is dead or alive. God allows for certain things to happen in our lives not out of wickedness. He wants us to face those things to show forth his power in our lives. I have gone through some and I thought that God has forsaken me. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. So what you think is strange is common. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted. Above that, ye are able. But with the temptation also makes a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. God can deliver you before the fire. God can deliver you before your temptation will ever occur. Sometimes he allows you to go through it. Certain things will happen for good reasons. Because you cannot understand it, you blame God. You blame your neighbor. You blame your pastor. You blame everybody around you. People will ask questions. Let anybody form any opinion about you. God's verdict is the most important. Hear this. 
why will God create a world and the world will be chaotic? A world without form or comeliness, the Almighty God. Why will God allow Abraham to be barren for 25 years when he actually can do it within one year? For 30 years, the people of Israel were in captivity. God left them. Why will God leave the people of Israel in captivity for 430 years? Why? Why? I was, before I gave my life to Christ, I thought that Christianity meant you don't have any issue. You don't have any problem. Everything will be all right. Everything will be well. But I discovered that it was not so. So when people promise you that you won't have any issue and you are in Christ Jesus, it's a lie. There are a lot of issues here in this world. Many are the afflictions, the Bible says, of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them, them all, them, not one, them all. I've wept before. I've cried before. I've sat down to ask myself questions. I've been a point when I thought that it was over. I thought like I should give it up point when you think that, oh, with all that you have, you still want to give it up? Yes. I thought about it. I said, what is in it? I, after all I've done, after all I've done, why? So there are many why, 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 why in our minds. Why? But God is there to answer those questions. When thou passest, the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. The psalmist says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they, they comfort me. People can say what they don't know. Heard what Kigozi just said now. Hawked on the third Milan Bridge. And when you are hawking on the third Milan Bridge and you are selling to those who are driving on that third Milan Bridge, usually if there is a little traffic, that's when you quickly sell. While you are trying to get money from the person you are selling to, you have to run and pursue. He was doing that and God was watching him. He passed the exam. That is the reason why he's here today. To come and sing. Come and give the Lord a hand. So sometimes when you are going through your own stuff, you may not know you are writing an exam. Due season is coming. Due season is coming. Destiny can rearrange things to favor you. Destiny can restructure to allow for order and growth in your life. Destiny can redirect so as to collapse time and allow for speed. Destiny can reposition you in order to meet your destiny helpers. Destiny can reform to bring you back to proper perspective. Destiny can happen and it may be tonight. Come through the door of worship. Come through the door of worship and he will do for you what no man can ever do. An acceptable worship must be intentional. True worship must not be controlled by your flesh. An acceptable worship must be Christ-centered. True worship must not be self-centered. An acceptable worship must not be need-driven. Need-driven. Whether he does it or he does not do it, worship him. Whether you can see him, you cannot see him, worship him. Whether you can... Anyhow, just worship him. Even in your pain, worship him. True worship must not be dominated by emotions. Even though your emotions can be involved. But don't let emotion take over. Be focused. In Africa, we are used to focusing on our worship of physical things, you know?
but an acceptable worship is by faith. Genuine worship is not offered in an atmosphere of condemnation. Some people will come and say, I am a sinner. I've been a sinner for years and I'm still a sinner. Don't come like that. Operate by faith, knowing that Jesus Christ has redeemed you. If you are born again, you have access into his presence. True worship must be word driven. Many of us, when we are worshiping God, we even use unknowingly the words that are used to worship Oya Shango and some other idols. We give titles that God does not bear at all to Him. Let us study the word if we want to worship and worship according to the word of God and celebrate His greatness in our midst. And that is when the heavens can be opened upon us. Today, I present to you the prophet by that woman by the well met Jesus who told her everything and there was a turnaround in her life. Are you expectant? Are you expecting great things to happen in your life? I don't know how it's going to be. The wind blows where it lists. God can do anything and great things can happen in your life. Hallelujah.